Hello everyone, uh, welcome to free crash course for competitive exams held by Virat Hindustan Sangam. This program is inspired by uh, Dr. Subramaniam Swami and it is held in association with Manifest IAS Bengaluru. This program is convened by Ravi Shankar sir, state education convener for VHS Karnataka branch. I am Dhanush Kumar, your chief mentor of the program. So we are done with polity, history and economy and negotiating the geography. Later on we will take up the environment. And at last, the aptitude and a few other left things. So you can watch this program online on the YouTube channel of Virat Hindustan Sangam. And also for any further queries, getting in touch with us, any feedback, suggestions, any doubts regarding any competitive exams, you can contact us on our Telegram channel, VHS Education Forum. Right. So yesterday, we were talking about the tides, so water and oceans. How is the, what is the relationship between the water and how is it, uh, what are the various phenomena of water in the oceans that may be waves, that may be tides, currents, all these things we have discussed and also we saw the various types of, various types of current across the world, uh, cold current, warm current and all these things and also we saw the impact of the gravitation on the tidal bulges and how does the waves originate all these things we saw in the last class so today we will talk about the life how life is there on earth so so life is largely confined to the biosphere so biosphere means what it includes atmosphere lithosphere as well as hydrosphere the combination of these three things together con con constitutes the biosphere so all the living components of the earth so living components that may be plants and trees uh, everything you will find it in the biosphere itself right so they interact with the environment the living beings uh, the animals interact with the environment so uh, it is uh, actually in the in the biosphere there are two types of components one is biotic components another is abiotic components so what is biotic components biotic components are those things those things which has life so it may be plants and trees right so which has life is the biotic component abiotic component is that those things which do not have life so for example your rocks soil water air all the temperature all these things are abiotic components right so we first when you talk about the biosphere we first should talk about the concept called ecology so ecology uh, it is a mix of biotic and abiotic components. Ecology means it's a mixture of biotic and abiotic components and also it includes the interaction between the biotic and abiotic components, right? So, in the, there should be in any ecology, if you take the, so you can take the ecology of a forest, you can take the ecology of a ocean, you can take the ecology of a river or you can take the ecology of a city, so there the biotic and abiotic components are constantly interacting so there should be a balance in the ecology if there is a problem in the balance what happens there will be pollution or there will be threat or there will be other natural disasters all these kinds of things so there has to be ecological uh, balance so this organi organisms the living organisms interacting with the abiotic components in a particular habitat so habitat means what where a organism resides right so where this organism resides where this uh, living organisms interact with the abiotic components so that is called as ecological system so the place where the organism interacts with the abiotic components in a particular uh, particular habitat is called as uh, ecological system right so where is this uh, where is this uh, term ecology originate from? So, it means ecology is originating from the word called oikos, O-I-K-O-S. So, what is oikos means household. So, oikos in a Greek, it means house, household. So, household of all the organisms. So, house of the animals is forest. So, that is the ecology for the animals. So, it means the household. For you, the household is your home. So, the your home constitutes your ecology, right? That is a, that is the concept. Next, you have the concept of 
habitat so what do you mean by habitat habitat includes physical and chemical factors in the environment so habitat is a place of residence so but it includes both physical physical components means the temperature pressure density all these things uh, chemical components means the chemical composition what are the different chemicals that are there in the particular environment so these two things constitute the habitat of a particular place right okay then this uh, next comes the concept of ecological adaptation so humans can adapt to any environment so if you are put in a desert so slowly you will adapt to the desert environment if you are put in a frost region or a polar region you will slowly adapt so various organisms have adapted to various uh, ecologies various environments for example if you take the polar bear it has adapted to the ice places places with snow and ice right so if you take the camels they are adapted to the desert so ecological adaptation has taken over over years of millions of years right okay so what are the so ne next we will talk about the different types of ecosystem what are the types of ecosystem you have terrestrial ecosystem and aquatic ecosystem these are the two types of ecosystem in the aquatic eco so first we will talk about the terrestrial ecosystem so in terrestrial ecosystem uh, we call it as a in the uh, specific with respect to terrestrial ecosystem terrestrial means on land so there we have this concept of biome b i o m e biome so what is a biome so biome means it is a plant and animal community in a particular geographical area so let's say there is a this western ghats so western ghats whatever the plants and animals are there in the western ghats they together constitute the biome of that particular place right okay so next uh, the in the biome these plants and animal community interact so they interact so plant animals will eat the plants plants uh, will take the uh, nutrition from the soil so there is constant interaction so there is constant respiration and also taking up of water for growth uh, chain interaction of oxygen and carbon dioxide all these things are there so plant and animal community they interact under specific conditions under a biome right so there are various biomes for example western ghat is one biome and also uh, the plain area is one biome desert is one biome so there are various biomes so which forms the boundary between different biomes there is let's say there is biome 1 and biome 2 so between biome 1 and biome 2 the boundary factor the boundary factor is the climate climate forms the boundary factor between different biomes so the climate of this biome is different from climate of this biome climate is the determining factor in differentiating the biomes right so what are the various types of biomes you have forest biome grassland biome tundra biome desert biome all these are the different types of biomes right next we will talk about the structural and structure and functions of the ecosystem so first we have to next we have to talk about the aquatic ecosystem aquatic ecosystem so aquatic ecosystem is divided into two types of ecosystem one is marine ecosystem another is freshwater ecosystem so marine means oceans ocean ecosystem is the marine ecosystem freshwater ecosystem is your lakes lakes and rivers are the freshwater ecosystem next you have structure and functions of the ecosystem what the, what function does the ecosystem perform so uh, first we will uh, talk about the uh, when we have to talk about the structure of a particular ecosystem we have to divide it into abiotic and biotic components structure of ecosystem it is divided into abiotic and biotic components what are the abiotic components i have told you rainfall temperature temperature humidity soil conditions all these are the abiotic components right sunlight and all these things sunlight also comes under the abiotic ecosystem right and next you have the biotic ecosystem biotic ecosystem means what you have in the biotic ecosystem you have producers consumers and decomposers this is very important producers producers means what you have green plants green plants are the producers they produce the food how do they produce the food 
via photosynthesis taking the energy from the sun they produce the food next you have consumers consumers you have three types of consumers first is primary consumer secondary consumer and tertiary consumer so who is the primary consumer so all these uh, herbivorous plants herbivorous means what those plants which eat grasses and leaves vegetarian animals so they form the primary consumers they consume the raw plant right what are the secondary consumers secondary consumers are carnivores that is which eats this uh, herbivorous animals which eats the deer which eats the uh, various things uh, jackal wolves jackals all these things so not wolves uh, deer elephant all these things right zebra right all these things from the ostrich all these things from the secondary consumer right For primary uh, secondary consumer then you have the tertiary consumer tertiary consumers are uh, secondary carnivores so first you have primary consumers is herbivores this is carnivores and tertiary consumers are also carnivores so these tertiary consumers they consume the carnivores that is the animals which eat the animals that will be consumed by this for example uh, you take the example of tiger so you know this wolves wolves eat the deer right wolves and hyenas they eat the deer right so that wolves is in turn eaten by tiger right so it eat consumes the carnivores carni prime secondary carni secondary consumers they consume the uh, what primary consumers where that is herbivores whereas the tertiary tertiary consumers they consume the carnivores which are already eating the animals right so that is the concept next you have the last level you have the decomposers last level is the decomposers what are decomposers they decompose the dead organisms right so that is your eagles jackals right so eagles and sorry eagles and jackals they come under tertiary consumers because they eat the animals right dead animals whereas that uh, if you talk about the decomposers it is your microorganisms fungi all these things they decompose the dead organisms right so so decomposers uh, what they do when the once the dead organisms are decomposed they will enrich the soil nutrients so nutrients in the soil will be increased because of the decomposition right so soil will enrich so uh, that's why you know uh, why do they bury the dead animals because it will convert into manure right so that is why so after why do they bury the humans also because it will convert into some organic compounds which is useful for the plants and also that is also your uh, fossil fuels petroleum diesel all are uh, formed out of the decomposition of the dead organism decomposition is done by the decomposers clear okay next you have the concept of food chain you have the concept of food chain what is food chain so food chain so food chain is the cycle of being eating and being eaten means what let's say there is grass here sorry so you have grasses here so this grass is eaten by what this grass is eaten by some animal primary animal right animal 1 right so it might be your grasshopper all those things right that is let's say grasshopper this in turn is eaten by what let's say rat rat is eaten by snake snake is eaten by eagle eagle is eaten by decomposers one it once it is just dead so this cycle is the food chain Be eating and being eaten you eat something in turn something else will eat you right that is the food chain right so here 
uh, there is a flow of energy. See, here this has obtained the energy from the sunlight. So, from here the energy flows to all these organisms. This energy gets, so this, this energy will be going to here, from here to here, here. So, at each level there is a loss of energy. Flow of energy is there. Let's say there is 100 calories of energy here. So, this energy will go here some 75 calories. So, this animal grasshopper or any other insect, butterfly and all, what happens? They will uh, do lot of, arga. Uh, they, they will produce the heat in the body, they will do respiration, all these things, right? Because of which what happens? They will lose some energy. So, in turn they will transfer some only 60 kilo calorie of energy, right? Here also this rat will also undergo under dust, digestion, excretion, respiration, all these activities produces the heat in the body. This will also lose some heat, heat out of the body. So, energy is lost here. Here it comes some 40 kilo calorie later. Here it comes some 20 kilo calorie and here it is some 10 kilo calorie and lost. So, this is how the energy reduces. This is how the energy flows from the food chain, right? So, but uh, do you think that there is, exi there is existing only a particular one food chain in the, on the earth? No. For example, this grasshopper is there. This need not be eaten by the rat, right? This can be eaten by some other animal, rabbit. Rabbit doesn't eat uh, grasshoppers, I think, right? So, some other animal. So, some other animal might eat the grasshopper. So, that animal... Animal two. That animal can be eaten by, let's say, uh, that not be snake, let's say lizard. So, that might be eaten by some other animal, right? So, there is no one particular chain. It is interlinked. So, this can be eaten by elephant as well, grass, and it can be eaten by directly, it can be eaten by deer also. Deer can be eaten by uh, tiger or it can be eaten by lion, right? So, there is interlinking, there is no one particular chain, there is complex interlinking. So, it is called as food web. Food chain is different. So, the interlinking of food chain is called as food web, right? Food web. So, uh, there are two types of food chain. One is the grazing food chain. Grazing food chain is what I have told you here, this one. Grazing means eating the grass. So, that is the first food chain. Then you have the second food chain is, see here from grass it progresses. Second one is detritus food chain. Detritus food chain means what? Here in the detritus food chain, it will start with a dead animal. Let us say a dead tiger or a dead eagle. So, this is eaten by the, this is eaten by some microorganisms will decompose it. So, here they will produce some nutrients. So, nutrients will go to the soil. So, from the soil, the it is picked up by the grass again. So, this is detritus food chain. That is the decomposition food chain. This is the second type of food chain. In this food chain, there is breakdown of the organic matter in the Grazing food. So, grazing food chain. In the grazing food chain, what we saw? That is from grass unto the eagle. What we saw? Here, there is lot of organic matter. Organic matter means what? Organic means that which includes carbon and hydrogen. Right? So, which, which includes, you can think uh, organic as something which is related to life. So, that is not, though that is not the right definition, actually it is those components, those uh, things which include carbon and hydrogen is called as organic as per the chemistry definition. So, you can think it as something related to life. So, in the grazing food chain, there is lot of organic, uh, anim organic uh, things. That is, uh, you have the rat, you have eagle, snake, all these things. So, this decomposition of these organic matter is the detritus food chain. Decomposing, so even if the rat is dead, that will also go like this. Snake is dead, that will also go like this. So, the decomposition is called the uh, detritus food chain, right? Next, we will talk about the uh, we will talk about the biomes. So, biomes, I have to discuss various biomes. First, you have the so it is not visible but I can't help it. This is the best picture I could get. Okay.
So first you have the forest biome. So I'll explain here itself. I'll uh, I'll explain so those you can. Add. First you have the forest biome. In forest biome you have five types of uh, subtypes. That is tropical forest, equatorial forest, deciduous forest, temperate forest, and boreal forest. Boreal forest in the hilly regions, right? So this is the five types of uh, forest and uh, the regions. So where these uh, for, uh, regions are uh, allocated, not important. Climatic characteristics also not important. So soil, so various types of soil will be there. That is also not important. Flora and fauna, there are various types of animals. That is what he has said. So this is so you have to just look at the first two columns. So next is the desert. So desert biome you have hot and dry desert. Hot and dry desert is the first uh, subtype. Second is semi-arid, semi-arid desert. So semi-arid means steppy type of climate. It is not completely dry. It is half, half dry. So semi-arid and also coastal desert, coastal desert all around the coast and also cold desert. Where do you find cold desert in India? Ladakh region. Ladakh is a cold desert in India. So here he has given the regions. You have Sahara, uh, resort, tar, tar desert, all these things, temperature is given. Uh, so here, the soil, soil in the desert is, it has rich nutrient, but no organic matter. Organic matter won't be there. So where do you find the grasses or the leaves in the desert? No, right? So there is no organic matter. So what are the flora and fauna? Scanty vegetation. Vegetation is very less. Some types of animal, you will find it, rabbits, rats, and all those things, right? Okay. Next, you have the grassland. So, grassland, you have two types of grassland. Tropical savanna and temperate steppe. Tropical is in the tropical region. So, you have the savanna. In the savanna, where do you find it? Somewhere in Australia, Australia, Africa and all those areas. So, here is given the climate, hot climate, uh, rainfall will be there. So, here they, he has given about the soil. Soil is in porous with thin layer of humus. So, in the grassland, there is a thin layer, very thin layer of manure will be there. Manure, humus means dead, dead leaves and all those things. There will be very thin layer, right? So, that is in the grassland. So, there are two uh, grasses will be there uh, in the grassland. So, trees and large shrubs are present. Giraffe, zebra, all the other animals present in the grassland. So, that is the third type of biome. The fourth type of biome is aquatic. In the aquatic, you have two types, subtypes. One is the freshwater biome and marine biome. So, where do you find it? Lakes, streams, rivers and all these areas. Temperature will be varying. So, you have water swamps and marshes there. And also, uh, what are the flora and fauna? Algae. Algae will be there. So, you know what is algae. So, the green color. Uh, mosses type of things. On the... So, you, you, you see the green patch on the rocks, right? That is algae actually. So, algae, uh, marine plant communities will be there in the aquatic ecosystem. Then you have the altitudinal biome. Altitudinal biome means height. That is hilly regions. So, what are the, where are they found? They are found on the Himalayas, Andes, Rockies, all these areas. So, the type of soil in the, type of soil in the altitudinal, that is uh, hills is the regolith. On the hills, you find this type of soil called as regolith, right? So, their temperature and precipitation varies. So, the type of animals and uh, plants is deciduous forest. You find deciduous to tundra vegetation, up to tundra vegetation. Tundra is this type of vegetation where you find some, uh, this uh, ro rhododendrons and all these plants. So, you pine trees. So, you, if you see the polar region, the type of plants there is completely different. So, we have uh, willows, birch, right? And also rhododendron plants and also pine trees, type of trees will be there in the uh, polar region. So, that is the type of the uh, forest you will find in the altitudinal regions, right? That is the in the hilly regions. Okay. So, next we will talk about the biogeochemical cycles. Biogeochemical cycles. So, what is biogeochemical cycles? How the chemicals, how the chemicals circulate or how the gases, various components of the earth, that might be carbon dioxide, oxygen, hydrogen, how do they go through the cycle? That is, they are present in the atmosphere. How do they come to the soil? From soil, how do they go to the water? From water, how do they again go to the 
atmosphere how how it will be taken up by the plants from plants how do they go to the atmosphere again so this cycle of various components of the lithosphere or hydrosphere or atmosphere is called as the bio geo chemical cycle bio bio means bio means what bio means life life cycle geo means earth so this is present in the earth and chemical so this includes the chemicals various chemicals carbon hydrogen all these things so bio geo chemical cycles right so first uh, so where do you find the energy for all these cycles it is sun which is the energy so all the cycles it might be carbon cycle hydrogen water cycle a uh, hydrogen cycle nitrogen cycle oxygen cycle for all these cycles the energy comes from the sun sun is the source of energy so how sun is a force source of energy because the solar energy is consumed by the plants via photosynthesis right so the via photosynthesis there is source of food for animals and plants so plants also derive their energy from photosynthesis by consuming the plants animals will derive the energy from the photosynthesis indirectly plants directly animals indirectly suppose uh, let's say uh, if 100 100 quality quantity that is 100 kilo calorie of uh, energy is coming to earth from the sun how much energy is fixed in the photosynthesis how much energy is taken up by the photosynthesis let's say if 100 kilo calories comes to the earth only 0.1% is consumed by the photosynthesis only 0.1% is fixed in the photosynthesis okay so in the in the bio geo chemical cycles these are the cycles so this is a carbon dioxide cycle i'll explain what it is so here what happens there is diversity of association see carbon dioxide is associated with animals decomposition roots plants so there is diversity various types of association in the uh, cycle so it is associated with the hydro water also land also atmosphere also gases also everything so uh, in this cycle there is flow of energy so there will be flow of energy there will be flow of water and flow of nutrients in the uh, geo bio geo chemical cycles right okay so here first we will talk about the carbon cycle so in the carbon cycle what happens uh, first uh, there is carbon dioxide in the atmosphere so that carbon dioxide is taken up by the plants plants respire the carbon dioxide they take up the uh, carbon dioxide uh, assimilation it is assimilated by the plants from plants it goes to so here plants not only take the carbon dioxide in the night time they will give out the carbon dioxide that is why you are advised in the night time don't go near the trees right so because night time they will give out carbon dioxide so plants also give out the carbon dioxide so cycle is complete here and also plants uh, uh, via root respiration so via root respiration they are going to do what they are going to uh, so one more thing is here you have animals so animals via respiration we we give out carbon dioxide that goes to the oxygen uh, that goes to the atmosphere and also our in the animals so our body is made at, made of carbon so lot of carbon will be there once we are dead so that carbon will be decomposed by the decomposer decomposers right so also roots respiration roots also give out the carbon dioxide via the respiration so that will go to the via decomposers and root respiration atmo carbon dioxide will go back to the atmosphere so this is the flow of energy water and nutrients so here you are just seeing the flow of carbon dioxide how it flows in the uh, between the land and so here there is no water uh, but uh, land and atmosphere right in the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide cycle so so in the atmosphere and hydrosphere there is a balance of chemical elements means what see why should these cycles be there see i told you carbon dioxide cycle first of all why should there be a cycle because what happens in the atmosphere and hydrosphere there will be imbalance of the chemicals right so to balance the chemicals right so in the if there is atmosphere there is excess carbon dioxide that is taken up by the animals 
right if they in the water there is excess some uh, element that is taken up by the atmosphere so to balance the chemical elements these type of cycles take place among the in uh, takes place in the biosphere so all these things takes these cycles undergo on the biosphere so biosphere includes what all litho hydro atmosphere right okay so there are two types of cycle the first type of cycle is sedimentary cycle and the second type of cycle is gaseous cycle so what you saw now of the carbon dioxide it is a gaseous cycle right it is a gaseous cycle so where these gases are saved so the reservoir for gases is so either gases will be present in the atmosphere or it is present in the oceans so gaseous cycle source is the atmosphere or oceans right on whereas on the uh, sedimentary cycle sedimentary cycle the other type of cycle is a sedimentary cycle what is a reservoir for sedimentary cycle it is either the soil or the rocks either soil forms the source or rocks form the source of the sedimentary cycle next you have the water cycle water cycle i have already discussed evaporation condensation precipitation the water cycle i have discussed in the last class next you have the carbon cycle i have discussed the carbon cycle uh, carbon dioxide cycle also so here carbon dioxide carbon is the basic element of the basic element of a organic compound if you take out any organic compound i have already told you what is organic compound it is something related to life right so it includes hydrogen and carbon so carbon carbon is a basic element basic element of the organic compound so this carbon dioxide is fixed by the photosynthesis so it is fixed by the photosynthesis right so this in the fix once the plant fixes the carbon dioxide what does it convert the carbon dioxide into it converts the carbon dioxide into carbohydrates and glucose so this energy carbon dioxide what is consumed by the plants it is converted into two things one is carbohydrate carbs so when you eat food you get carbs right so that carbo carbohydrates and also glucose various types of glucose sucrose all these things it is converted into right so and also this is stored in the plant tissue this carbon dioxide gets stored in the plant tissue right in the inside tissue tissue means what so so you have cells many cells form the when the cells come together they form a tissue right so uh, like animals have tissues plants also have tissues so in the tissues this carbon dioxide is saved right next you have the oxygen cycle oxygen cycle is also impacted by the photosynthesis oxygen cycle is not given so it is also impacted by the photosynthesis so in oxygen cycle what happens see uh, in the carbon carbon cycle i told you carbon dioxide is used for is used for what uh using carbon dioxide is converted into carbohydrates and glucose by the plants but uh, this carbohydrates gets oxidized in the oxygen cycle oxidized means adding of oxygen so if there is nitrogen nitrogen will become nitrous oxide if there is sulfur sulfur becomes sulfuric uh, sulfur oxide right if there is some other component it will become the oxide of that particular component right so if you have hydrogen hydrogen oxide all these things so this oxidation of the carbon dioxide carb car carbohydrates generated in the carbon cycle will be done by the oxygen cycle so why oxidation so when you oxidize something it will be useful for some uh, some purpose right so that is why oxidation takes place so even your rust rust on the iron is because of oxidation right oxidation of the iron right so this oxygen combines with a various elements so in the oxygen cycle oxygen combines with various elements it combines with carbon to become carbon dioxide it becomes co combines with hydrogen to become either water or something else right so it goes on combining with various elements so how does the oxygen is produced so at the i told you in the earlier classes so oxygen in the atmosphere was uh, born out of the degassing of the oceans so oceans were saturated with oxygen and later oxygen flooded the atmosphere so this oxygen is obtained by breaking the water 
So water is what? H2O. So when you break the H2O, you find the oxygen, right? By breaking the H2O, you will find the oxygen. So you will, uh, where do this oxygen comes from? One is from the respiration, respiration of plants. Plants give out oxygen and also transpiration of the plants. Transpiration means from the leaves, they will give out the, so it might be due, due to evaporation or giving out water and water vapor and oxygen from the leaves of the plants. That is called as transpiration. Giving out water vapor or oxygen from the leaves of the plants is called as transpiration. Now next we will talk about the nitrogen cycle. In nitrogen cycle, so in the atmosphere there will be nitrogen that is fixed. So nitrogen cannot be directly used. Other things can be directly used. So this nitrogen, how much percentage of oxygen is the nitrogen? 78% of oxygen, 75% of the atmosphere is nitrogen. How much is oxygen? 21%, right? So this nitrogen uh, is your, where, where do you all find the nitrogen on earth? You will find it in amino acids. So various types of acids, amino acids used in the food and also nucleic acids, acids found in the nucleus. So there you will find the nitrogen and also proteins. You consume various types of proteins, right? Animal protein, plant protein. There also nitrogen is present. So there are some, there are some areas where nitrogen can be used directly, directly by plants. But the majority of area, there is no direct use of the nitrogen. Rather, the nitrogen is fixed. How do the nitrogen is fixed? One is fixing means what? Converting. See, the atmospheric nitrogen is not directly usable by the plant. So, it has to be converted into usable, usable form. So, how is it converted? By microorganisms in the soil. So, you have this rhizobium. Rhizobium converts the atmospheric nitrogen into the usable form. Nitrates or nitrates. Right? So, microorganisms in the soil is the first thing. And also, nitrogen is converted into usable form by lightning. Thunder and lightning. They can fix the nitrogen. And also, marine organisms. Marine animals. Animals in the oceans. They can also convert the nitrogen into usable form. Right? So, once C. Once few organisms convert the nitrogen into usable form, then other organisms can also start using the nitrogen until which it is not directly usable by the organisms, right? So, so this, uh, this uh, later what happens this once the nitrogen is fixed, so you have the nitrate compounds, nitrate compounds. So, how do you obtain the nitrate compounds? See this, uh, here it is there, biological fixation, that is microorganisms and industrial fixation. Industries can also fix the nitrogen via various processes. So, here in the biological fixation, what happens? The bacteria, so the bacteria will convert the nitrogen into either nitrate or nitrite. So, this is how the two things, nitrate or nitrite. So, later... This nitrate or nitrite is undergoes denitrification. Via denitrification, the nitrogen returns to the atmosphere, right? So, this is the nitrogen cycle. It goes back to the atmosphere. So, the next concept is the biological, uh, ecological balance. So, in the ecology, that is in the environment, there should be balance. If human, so human is the only uh, animal which is in excess population. Almost 7.5 billion now. So, is there any animal or plant with this much number? No, only. So, there is ecological imbalance. Those, there should be proper balance among the environment. Uh, proper number of trees, proper number of animals, proper number of humans, proper number of plants. So, when the, e, this equilibrium, so entire earth is based on an equilibrium. Equilibrium means some kind of balance is there. When this Bal uh, when this balance is there, there is stability or else there is there was no stability. So, one example I will give you, uh, you. You take the concept of diversity. So, diversity means what? So, you have so many million, uh, thousands or lakhs of varieties of animals. You have lakhs of varieties of plants. So, he, this is called as diversity. So, is diversity good or bad? Because diversity... 
is good because it promotes stability. For example, even if one or two animals or one or two plants are dead, other uh, things will manage. So, if diversity is not there, what happens? You, you take the example of food chain itself. So, every animal is dependent on only one other animal. So, if that animal, so let's say animal B is dependent on animal A. If animal A goes extinct, if it is completely extinct, B will also go extinct because there is dependence, right? So, there should be diversity. Animal B should be dependent on various animals. So, even if A goes off, it can depend on C or D, right? So, there should be proper diversity. When diversity is there, in the ecology, there is stability, right? Okay. So, the number of herbivorous, carnivorous, they should be very high. So, all the types of animals and plants should be very high in order to promote the diversity. So, first, in this, when we talk about the ecological balance, we have to talk about the concept of succession, ecological succession. What is succession? See, first, of all, first there will be some barren land. Nothing will be there. Later, some animals and plants will come and occupy the area. This is called as primary succession. Barren area, some plants and animals come and occupy. So, this is called as the primary succession. So, uh, this uh, primary succession, once this primary succession is done, secondary succession will take place. So, some other animals or plants which are dependent on these plants and animals, they will come and take over this space. That is called as secondary succession, that is secondary species, right? So, the, uh, what is the, this is the concept of succession, primary and secondary succession. Uh, first, it will be barren, uh, first animals and plants, some animals and plants will come, that is primary. Later on, that will also go off and some other animals and plants will come. So, once this, see, in the primary succession, once there is some trees or some plants or animals, what they will do? They will bring changes to the ecosystem, right? So, they will give out oxygen, they will consume some food, they will alter the temperature, they will alter the soil. So, this entire thing will become a new area. So, once this becomes a new area, some other animal and plant which is adaptable to this new area, they will come and occupy. That is secondary succession. So, this is the concept of succession. So, second, next we will talk about the, see in the secondary succession, secondary succession is very important. Because secondary succession, there should be one particular, already some established success, primary succession should be there. So, there should be some prior, proper environment where, we, where the secondary succession will take place. So, uh, here we will talk about the concept of disturbance. So, uh, in disturbance what happens? The how, is the how is the ecosystem disturbed? It is either naturally or via humans. So, naturally means earthquakes, floods and all these things. Humans means pollution, uh, deforestation, glow, greenhouse gases, all those things. So, early, even before also there used to be succession. Primary area succession will be taken over by secondary succession. But because of human intervention, the number of successions are increasing. Because human is occupying all the lands and exploiting all the resources. So, the number of successions are increasing, which is a bad sign, right? So, last the concept of this uh, world, uh, physical geography is biodiversity and conservation. Biodiversity and conservation. So, what is biodiversity? Biodiversity. So, biodiversity means, bio means living things. Diversity, how many types of living things are there? on the earth is called as biodiversity. So, this biodiversity is our wealth. I have told you because if there are multiple animals, the chances of survival is high. Because if one or the two animals are removed, there is the balance won't be disturbed. But if there are only one or two animals, if they are dead, the entire thing is dead. So, biodiversity is very important. That is why it is called as a living wealth of our planet. It is the true wealth of our planet, right? So, uh, where, where does the biodiversity originate from? It originates from the soil, right? So, if you take the plants, if you take the animals, everything is originated out of what? Soil only, right? So, where does the soil originate from? From the rocks. So, 
this uh, rocks are the source of the biodiversity rocks to soil soil to the biodiversity right so what where does the energy for the biodiversity comes from where does the energy for the animals and plants come from it comes from the solar energy it comes from solar energy and water these are the two sources right so humans so because of humans the biodiversity is increasing or decreasing it is decreasing because we are causing extinction of many animals and plants so there is one data that so the 99% of the variety of animals and plants that were there on the earth today they are extinct 99% have gone into extinction 99% of the species right so is the biodiversity uh, when we talk about biodiversity we should also talk about this fact is it equally distributed so biodiversity is concentrated in some places but uh, that is variety so you, you take the equatorial forest amazon forest so there is lot of biodiversity there are thousands of plants thousands of animals but you, if you take the polar region there is no biodiversity there are hardly one or two plants five or six animals so biodiversity varies from place to place right so under this when we talk about the biodiversity we have to talk about the variety of diversity first is the genetic diversity what is genetic diversity you take the example of humans itself so among you are all of you same no right so we belong to the same species we are humans but we are different why because of the genetic diversity the genes within us dna rna are different right so this genetic diversity is the basic building block See, if there was only one gene in the humans, the, the the humans would have gone extinct. So, because there are, that is why they advise you don't marry in the close family, because genes are very close. When genes are very close, there is high risk of diseases being de developed. So, diverse the genes, uh, the more the diversity among the genes, more is the adaptability. so diversity genetic diversity is the basic building blocks of any species so because of the genetic variation we have uh, changes in the height color all these things right and uh, various things races various races various colors is because of the genetic diversity so uh, so this uh, genetic diversity uh, if if the genetic diversity is more the population will increase if genetic diversity is less the population would decrease next we will talk about the species diversity what is species diversity so species means those party those components or those things those animals which have animals or plants which have similar physical characteristics right so all of us are human species we have the same two legs same two hands same head nose eyes right so similar physical characteristics belong to uh, species so similar physical characteristics called as species so they are located in a defined area one particular area they will be there right so humans are largely concentrated so now to humans are everywhere you take up uh, some uh, tigers or any other species they are located in particular areas right so so there is concept of species richness species richness means what if there are multiple types of species if you take animal there are if there are multiple types of animals if there are multiple types of plants then it is called as species richness right so then there is concept of species abundance abundance means if particular species how much numbers they are particular if you take the tiger species how many tigers are there then you have the species types how many types of species are there in a particular region right so this is the richness abundance and types of species so then you have the hot spots of diversity species hot spots hot spots means so see all the hot spots are located somewhere around the equator so around, so you have this the uh, first you have in india you have western ghats it's a hot spot you will find lot of animals and plants eastern himalayas is a hot spot then you have madagascar madagascar is a hot spot then guinea is a hot spot 
सेंट्रल अमेरिका दिस एंडीज दट इज ब्राजील रीजन इज ए हॉट स्पॉट कोलंबिया इज ए हॉट स्पॉट इंडोनेशिया इज ए हॉट स्पॉट सो देर हॉट स्पॉट मीन देर आर मल्टीपल टाइप्स ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स राइट सो दैट इज वाई इट इज रिच इन स्पीशीज राइट ओके नेक्स्ट यू हैव इको सिस्टम डाइवर्सिटी फर्स्ट इज जेनेटिक सेकेंड इज स्पीशीज थर्ड इज द इको सिस्टम डाइवर्सिटी सो इको सिस्टम इज इको सिस्टम इंक्लूड वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ एनिमल्स इको सिस्टम मीन्स इट इंक्लूड्स मल्टीपल टाइप्स ऑफ एनिमल्स इट इंक्लूड्स मल्टीपल टाइप्स ऑफ हैबिटेट एंड ऑल्सो इट इंक्लूड्स मल्टीपल प्रोसेस इट इंक्लूड्स द रेस्पिरेशन प्रोसेस इट इंक्लूड्स द कंजम्पन प्रोसेस इट इंक्लूड्स द वॉट डाइजेशन प्रोसेस एक्सक्रीशन प्रोसेस सो वेरियस थिंग्स वेरियस थिंग्स आर इन्वॉल्व इन द इको सिस्टम डाइवर्सिटी सो इन द इको सिस्टम डाइवर्सिटी बिटवीन द इको सिस्टम see in the species the boundary the difference between species there is clear cut boundary so we can differentiate between a cat and a dog but when it comes to ecosystem the differentiation is not very uh, rigid so it is actually difficult so what is the importance of biodiversity why biodiversity is needed so uh, so hum uh, biodiversity influences the human culture first importance is it influences the human culture so if you take the example of the tribes so the tribal people their culture is influenced by the uh, forest or the region they are living in in turn biodiversity is influenced by the humans also humans also influence the biodiversity so humans take up a plant take up some fruit eat and throw it somewhere so there that plant will come so biodiversity is influenced by the humans also humans hunt some animals so they will that animal will go extinct so human humans are influencing the biodiversity there as well right so the first importance of biodiversity is ecological role what is the ecological role so ecological means in that is the environmental role of biodiversity so in the environmental uh, role you have there are interdependence of organisms so in the environment there are multiple types of organisms so these organisms are dependent on one another right there if there is high biodiversity there is high interdependence so there will be stability in the environment so that is the ecological role of the in uh, the biodiversity next is ener energy role energy role you have so in the ecological role only you have the biodiversity acts as a energy store storage of energy right so all the animals will store the energy right by consuming the food so biodiversity acts as a store of energy they once they decompose they once they decompose what happens the energy will be released again in the environment so they act as a storage of energy they also act as a storage of organic matter biodiversity stores the organic matter biodiversity is also helpful in recycling water that is the ecological role so water gets recycled in the bio because of biodiversity so uh, that is uh, that is the ecological role of the biodiversity uh, recycling cycling of water then you have if biodiversity increases the survival of the animals also increase if biodiversity decreases survival decreases so if the biodiversity increase stability also increases in the ecosystem that is the ecological role next we will talk about the economic role of the biodiversity economic role means what so you have various types of crops right it is a contribution of biodiversity so you have that is called agro diversity right so agro biodiversity the various types of crops you are consuming is because of biodiversity because of multiple crops are there what if there was only rice to eat so biodiversity gives multiple types of crops food they give biodiversity gives food biodiversity could gives various types of animals for consumption also biodiversity gives various medicinal plants that is the uh, economic role then you have the scientific role of biodiversity what is the scientific role so if you examine the biodiversity you can find the clues about the evolution of earth how did the earth evolve 
So if you look at the animals, Homo sapiens, some 10,000 years back and now you will get to know how humans have evolved, right? Scientific research, it is useful and also understanding the life, biodiversity, how life has evolved on the earth. There also biodiversity is useful and also uh, that is the uh, scientific role of the biodiversity. So next we will talk about the loss of biodiversity. Why biodiversity is going loss? First is increasing human population. Because of increasing human population, humans want to consume lot of natural resources. So natural resources are going extinct. Right? That is the, uh, that is the negative. Then you have deforestation. Deforestation is also reducing the biodiversity. Then there is loss of various habitats. Very various habitats are getting reduced. Then you have uh, the because of natural calamities, disasters also biodiversity is many biodiversity is reducing. So if there is a forest fire, natural disaster, the bio many plants and animals die. So biodiversity will decrease, right? So also because if you increase include the Pesticides, too much pesticides also reduce the biodiversity. Then you have inclusive, introducing exotic species. Exotic species means what? So you have in India, so let's say there is a, this Parthenium grass. So it is not from India. So it is, it has come from some American region. So once it came to India as a, by somehow, so it has, it is a weed. So wh what is it doing? It is an exotic species. Exotic species means it is not belonging to India. It has come from somewhere else. So what does it do? It will consume the energy from the our surrounding plants. So surrounding plants will die. So exotic species also reduce the biodiversity. Hunting will also reduce the biodiversity. So then uh, to produce to conserve the biodiversity, we have this International Union for Conservation of Nature, IUCN. IUCN has three categories of protection. So the first category is endangered. So this is IUCN red list. It is called as IUCN red list. So in the red list you have endangered categories, endangered animals. So some animals are critically endangered. Some are just endangered. The endangered animal is you have critically endangered. You have dugong, dugong is there. Some types of uh, some types of uh, this vultures are critically endangered. So some uh, things are critical. So you have the cheetah. Cheetah is extinct in India. Cheetah is not there in India. Only leopards are there. Right. Uh, tiger is endangered. Tiger is not critically endangered. Tiger is uh, uh, endangered. Elephant is also endangered. So these are the uh, endangered species that is in the red list. The second list is vulnerable sea species. Second list is vulnerable. There you have likely these are the animals that will go extinct in future. If we do not take proper care, they will get extinct in the future. That is vulnerable risk. Uh, the third one is the data deficient list. So about some animals, if we don't have any data, how much abundance they are in, that is data defi deficient list. So you have critically endangered, endangered, vulnerable and data deficient and least concern. So actually there are six categories. One is, this is very, very important. First, actually first is extinct. Those which have gone extinct. So the extinct is, so the best example is cheetah in India is extinct. And you have the critically endangered. Dugong, Dugong is there. Some type of vultures are there. Endangered tiger and elephant. Then you have vulnerable, which will be vulnerable to extinction. Then you have the least concern for those animals for which we need not show any concern. For example, deer. There are multiple deers. We need not talk about that. Right? Then you have data deficient for some animals. We do need not, we do not have any data. That is data deficient. So also this is the things. Then we will talk about the last concept of this chapter. Conservation of biodiversity. How biodiversity is conserved. How it is preserved. First is we have to reduce the population, we have to uh, reduce the human intervention in the forest, right? We have to re reduce the deforestation, right? We have to reduce the hunting and you also reduce the international trade of animals. So these are the things we have to educate the people and we have to cooperate with the forest people. They will be knowing, having lot of knowledge. 
then with respect to these are the things uh, and to with respect to uh, protect the biodiversity there is a convention earth summit 1992 rio earth summit 1992 we have the convention on biodiversity right so there are uh, some three conventions are signed one is united nation framework convention on climate change 1992 then is the conservation of biodiversity convention on biodiversity that is 1992 1994 you will sign the uh, convention on the desert and desertification right okay so in order to protect the biodiversity we have to preserve certain species so we have to take certain species and protect in some safe houses right then you can also we have to pro prevent the extinction of certain species certain species are likely to go extinct they have to be protected then crops have to be preserved certain crops can also go extinct for example uh, in svalbard in norway svalbard in norway where is norway i'll show you here somewhere here norway svalbard is somewhere here what they have a seed bank so all the world seeds are saved there in order to suppose the crop will get extinct we can take the seed from there and regrow the crop right in svalbard it is there then we have to in order to conserve the biodiversity we have to regulate the international trade as well right then with respect to protection of biodiversity what do we have what have we done in india we have wildlife protection act 1972 according to which we have national parks centuries wildlife sanctuaries national parks are demarcated before that there was concept of reserve forest protected forest after that now we have we have a national park wildlife sanctuary all those things right then uh, also we have uh, what 2016 to uh, 2030 we have a un india decade for ecosystem rejuvenation ecosystem rejuvenation and we have done and there, to protect the environment from 2016 we have a new mission in india right okay then we will last concept of this chapter there uh, we will talk about the mega diversity centers mega diversity that is where there is lot of diversity there are 12 countries where the mega diversity is there what are the 12 countries mexico Mexico, you have mega diversity. Then you have Colombia. Colombia has mega diversity. Brazil has mega diversity. Ecuador has mega, Ecuador has mega diversity. Peru has mega diversity. Then you have the Democratic Republic of Congo. They have mega diversity. Then you have Madagascar. This was mega diversity. China has mega diversity. India has mega diversity. Malaysia, Indonesia, and Australia, all these countries have mega diversity. Mega means very high diversity among the animals and plants. Next, so also IUCN, International Union for Conservation of, for, of Nature, they have also marked certain biodiversity hotspots. Certain hotspot, hotspot means where biodiversity is very high. This organization also marked, so mark certain hotspots. So they have marked Madagascar. So, if you take the example of Madagascar, 80, which, con which continent does Madagascar belong to? African continent. So, in Madagascar, 85% of the 85% of the animals and plants found in Madagascar is not found anywhere else. Right? So, it is a biodiversity hotspot. Okay. Now, we, will, we have finished the world physical geography we will move towards india physical geography we'll talk about the india now so with respect to india physical geography india so what is india physical geography first we have to talk about the india's location so what is the longitude and long lap uh, latitude of india so the southernmost so what is the longitudinal extent of india hmm? 
so the longitude of india it's one second i will also have to check i have forgotten so india uh, begins from uh, 6.44 degree 6.44 degree north and from 6.6 degree to 35 degree north and latitude is 68 degree to 97 degree east is the long the longitude is longitude of india is 6 degree 44 minutes to 35 degree 30 minutes north is the longitude longitudinal extent and latitudinal extent is 68 degree 7 minutes east to 97 degree 25 minutes east is the longitude right so latitude means this longitude means horizontal horizontal i mean longitude is a vertical line so it so india has so from here so here in the uh, tip of andaman and nicobar you have how much 6 degree 44 minutes here and the tip of jammu and kashmir you have 35 degree 30 minutes from here you have 68 degree 7 minutes and till here you have 97 degree 25 minutes right that is the longitudinal and latitudinal extent of india the southernmost tip is 6 degree 45 minutes right okay so uh, this if you look at the longitudinal and latitudinal extent approximately it is 30 degree so north to south east to west that is it is actually 30 degree so uh, uh, where where do we find if this is 30 degree north to south and east to west where do we have the standard meridian meridian of india where do we measure the time so the time measurement is 82 degree 30 minutes east is the standard meridian of india the line which passes through 82 degree 30 minutes is the standard meridian that that by that we determine the time it is you have greenwich meridian greenwich meridian 0 degree standard meridian so that is that passes through london right uh, uk so how much far is this meridian it is 5 and a half hours 5 and a half pi hour 30 minutes ahead of the greenwich meridian right so well, they will ask this question how why are how many states does the standard meridian of india passes through it passes through five states up madhya pradesh andhra pradesh chatisgarh and odisha these are the five states the standard meridian of india passes through right so what is the long distance between the tip of northern and southern tip of india so it is 3214 km you can just remember 3000 400 to 2214 km and east to west what is the east to west uh, distance it is 2933 km east to west it is 2933 km okay so uh so here the time difference between this point to this point is 2 hours actually it is 2 hours but we follow the same time now there is a uh, demand for a separate time zones in india so in usa you have how many time zones you have five time zones right so likewise in russia you have some 11 or 12 time zones right so there are uh, in india we have only one time zone so they are demanding the that there should be a multiple time zones so india has how many uh, what are the types of climate india has uh, in which region does india fall into it falls in the tropical region and subtropical region see 
till here it is tropical tropic of cancer so how many states does the tropic of cancer passes through in india what are the eight states gujarat rajasthan madhya pradesh chatisgarh jharkhand west bengal tripura mizoram eight states totally right so uh, so till here it is tropical above this it is subtropical or warm temperate climate in india right what is the area of india it is 3.28 million square kilometer 3.28 million square kilometer it is the seventh largest country seventh eighth seventh largest country so how much percentage of the world area does india have 2.4 percent of the world land surface right so you have multiple diversity in india we have mountains we have rivers we have deserts we have Hima, the mountains in the form of himalaya mountain is there hindu kush mountain is there sulaiman range is there so so this was also belonging to india at one time point of time so now it is outside india which it comes into india again okay so himalaya hindu kush sulaiman range is there we have purvanchal hills this is purvanchal hills is there then you have the indian ocean to the south so because of all these things it is called as a it is not called as a country rather a subcontinent whenever we talk about india we talk india as a subcontinent subcontinent means it is a continent because indian subcontinent doesn't include india alone it includes pakistan nepal bhutan bangladesh all these countries right so how, next we will talk about the coastline of india how much coastline does india has it has so the mainland has 6100 km of coastline that is from here till here 6100 km but you if you include the andaman nicobar and lakshadweep it comes up to 7517 km of coastline that is why uh, narendra modi government has focused on the sagar mala project current affairs sagar mala project is there then you have coastal uh, coastal oriented development program is there various programs are there right so we have india is located in the south central part of asia it is not exactly south asia it is south central part of asia so we know you know the neighbors right which are the countries which are neighboring india so what is the next we'll talk about the structure and physiography of india what is the structure and physiography of india so when we talk about india we have to first look at the earth itself so earth is 460 million years old earth is 460 million years old and earth has been formed via various endogenic and exogenic uh, processes right so you know what is endogenic process what is exogenic process earth has been formed via various endogenic and exogenic so similarly india indian topography has also been formed via various endogenic and exogenic processes right so this that day i told you indian plate so indian plate is part of the it is called as indo australian plate earlier it was below equator millions of years ago it was below equator now well, slowly slowly it has come to collide, collide with the eurasian plate so the australian plate australian plate went towards australia the present australia indian plate came up so indo australia plate is same but some part came above towards uh, indo uh, eurasia eurasian plate that is europe and asian plate and it collided and the other plate the australian part went that side right so uh, so we have three geological divisions of india india can be divided into three geological divisions so one is the peninsular block so this is the peninsular block indian Pen so this region is the indian peninsular block so i'll tell you the boundary next is the mountains it is either himalayan mountains and also peninsular mountains third is the plain region indo ganga brahmaputra plain plain region so when we talk about the peninsular block peninsular block which forms the what forms the boundary of the see this is the indian peninsula peninsula means what 
Three sides water, one sides land. What is Gulf? Three sides land, one side water. So you have Gulf of Mannar. See, three sides land and one side water. What is a strait? Here there is this Park Strait is there. P A K Strait. What is Park Strait? What is the meaning of strait? It is a narrow passage between two big seas, two big water bodies. See, here you have one big water body. Here on this side also you have one big water body. Here Park Strait is connecting both these big water bodies, right? So, this peninsular block, we, it begins from runoff Kutch. This is runoff Kutch. From there it begins and it goes up to Aravalis. Here somewhere it is Aravalis is there. See here Aravali range is there. Aravalis. Then from there it flows. It goes parallel to Emuna. It will come like this. Emuna is here. So it will come, come here. This peninsular block. Then it comes up to Rajmahal Hills. So Rajmahal Hills. It is northeast of Chota Nagpur Plateau. Rajmahal Hills is here. Right. So it will come till there. And from there it will culminate at Ganga Delta. So it is briefly... It is like this. This is the peninsula. This is the peninsular boundary. Not only that, they say this, this is called as Kirby Anglong Plateau. This part is Kirby Anglong and Meghalaya Plateau. So they say that this was also part of the Indian peninsula, this peninsular block. But later there was a fault here, fault on the gap. That gap is called Malda Fault. Malda fault, very very important. So this Malda fault was later on filled up by the sediments brought by the Ganga. Right? Malda fault uh, divided the peninsula block with the Kirby Anglong and Meghalaya Plateau. That is one on side. But they say this part was also part of the peninsular plateau. But later, uh, even today, but the bottom part is part of peninsular plateau. Now ab above we are filled with sand in the desert. Right? So this peninsular plateau, what is it formed of? What is it made of? It is made up of granite and gneiss. What are granite and gneiss? They are igneous rock. So peninsular block is made up of igneous rock, granite and gneiss. So that is why it is rigid and stable. So it is a rigid and stable. That is why you don't find many earthquakes. Right, so this uh, this peninsular block is is existing since the Cambrian period. So I've told you Ian era period epoch, right? In the in the physical world, physical geography. So this belongs to the pre-Cambrian age. Sorry, Cambrian period, peninsular block, and this west coast. See west coast. This part is submerged within the ocean west part so they say right this dwarka dwarka is submerged dwarka city of dwarka okay so here uh, this part was formed because of tectonic activity tectonic means what plate tectonics because of plate tectonics this part was formed here the faulting faulting uh, took place faulting means gap two rocks moving away is a crack in the rock that is a fault and also vertical movement one is faulting and some rocks also move vertically horizontal movement and vertical movement in this uh, particular plateau so that is why you find the narmada narmada uh, there is a you have vindhya and satpura right so where does narmada flow it flows between vindhya and satpura so that is that where Narmada flows, no, that is a rift valley. Rift valley is because of a fault. So, here there was upliftment and also a fault because of which there is a valley, rift valley between the India mountain and Satpura mountain where today's Narmada flows. So, this Satpura movement is all Satpura mountain is also because of the upliftment of the or the vertical movement of the rock. So, one is horizontal movement, faulting. Another is vertical movement. Both of these are formed because of tectonic actions, plate tectonics in the particular region. So, there are other other hills apart from the Narmada. Uh, 
Vindhya and Satpura, you have the Nallamalla Hills. Nallamalla Hills, you have, here is Nallamalla Hills, you have Javdi Hills somewhere here. And you have the Mahendragiri Hills, somewhere Gar Garjat Hills is there, Mahendragiri Hills is there. So, these are the many types of hills. Here, the rivers, whatever they flow, they have low gradient. Low gradient means, see in the Himalayas, the rivers flow in like this direction. They will be very steep. Whereas, in the peninsula, the gradient is low. Right? Himalaya gradient will be like this. Peninsula, it will be low. So, you will find mostly east flowing rivers. Rivers which flow in the eastern direction. Right? So, talking about the Himalaya, uh, next uh, peninsular block is done. We will talk about the Himalayas and peninsular mountains. Mountains in the Himalayas and peninsular. So, in the Himalayas, the mountains are young. They are young. Why young? Because they are still growing. Because the Indian plate is crashing with the Eurasian plate. So, Himalayan mountains are young. They are weak and they are flexible. So, that is why you find lot of earthquakes there. They are weak and flexible. Okay. So, there in the Himalayan mountains, you have faults and folds. So, mountain is getting folded. Folded means like this. Mountain is getting folded. Faulting means there is a gap. Gap. So, all these forces are acting in the Himalayan region. So, this Himalayan region, it is because of tectonic origin, you know, right? Because of the plate movement. And here, whatever the rivers you find, they are in youthful stage so when the river is in youthful stage what is the topography fluvio glacial fluvio land fluvial landform you will find so you will find gorges so i have told you what is a gorge it is like this a for the gap so if these are the two mountains the gap between the mountain is a gorge where the river flows right so i have shown you the diagram also so there is gorges will be there and also there will be, gorges are there in the Himalayas. You have V-shaped valleys. V-shaped valleys means valley which are in V-shape. Then you have rapids. Rapids are fast flowing rivers. And also you have waterfalls in the region. There are a lot of waterfalls. Right. Next, we will talk about the Indo-Ganga and Brahmaputra plain. So, this is about the um, Okay, next we will talk about the Indo Ganga Brahmaputra plain. So, this is the Indo. So, Indus river falls, flows here, Ganga here, Brahmaputra here. So, Indo Ganga Brahmaputra plain. So, one second. So, this is a plain formed by the rivers. So, rivers bring the sediments from the mountains and they deposit in the plains. You know, right? I have talked about the deposition. Boulders, cobbles, pebbles, all these things, right? So, this, this part, Indo-Ganga Indo Brahmaputra, originally it was a depression. Depression means, it was uh, below the mean sea level, there was a fault, there was a proper halatara, there was a depression, right? Uh, ground was below. So, that was filled by the sediments bought by the rivers. So, whatever the sediments, debris bought by the rivers, that got accumulated in the depression, right? So, later that deposition is called alluvial deposition, alluvium deposition. Today, it is up to 1 to 2 kilometers height, alluvium deposition. So, uh, one second. So, this is about the Indo-Ganga Brahmaputra plain, what we have. Then we will talk about the physiography of India. Physiography. First, uh, when we talk about the physio physiography means it, the, it is a part of geography where we will study the physical characteristics of an area. So, first we will talk about the north and northeast mountains. North and northeast mountains. So, this is, this is the northern mountains we are talking about. So, first we will talk about the Himalayas. Himalayas are Parallel mountain ranges. They are ranges which are parallel to each other. So, first you have the greater Himalayas. Greater Himalayan range. See, this is the greater Himalaya. Can you see? This is the greater Himalayan range. That is divided into two things. One is greater Himalayas 
and the second one is Shiva Alix. So Shiva Alix is lesser height, greater Himalayas is higher height, right? So the orientation, so in which direction this mountain is? See it is in the direction from, what is this position called? So this is north, this is west, what is this direction called? Northwest. So this is from northwest to southeast direction, the orientation is northwest to southeast. Then here in the Sikkim region, in the Sikkim region it is, the Sikkim region it is east-west direction. Here this is Sikkim, the mountains are in the east-west direction and in the uh, Nagpur, Manipur region, here it is north-south direction. The Himalayas are in north-south direction. So the total length of Himalayas is how much? It is 2500 kilometers and the total width width means agla so the total width of himalayas is 2 152 what is the total width 160 to 400 kilometers that is the thickness of himalayas width is 160 to 400 kilometers it is huge right so this himalayas form a climatic divide physical divide cultural divide and drainage divide what do you mean by all this so the region next to Himalaya that is China and India it is separated by climate and it is separated physically that is we cannot go cross it. Third is culturally their culture our culture different drainage that is water water going on both the sides drainage right. So this separation is because of what Himalayas right Himalayas form this the division. So first we will talk about the Kashmir and Northwest Himalayas. In the Kashmir you will find four things. One is the Kashmir Himalayas. First thing you will find the Karakoram range. Here is the, where is the Karakoram range? Yeah, Karakoram range is the topmost range. Next you will find the Ladakh range. This is the Ladakh, Union Territory of Ladakh was formed, right? So next you have the Zaskar range. Third one is Zaskar. Fourth is the Pirpanjal. These are the four ranges you will find in the Kashmir and Northwest Himalayas. Clear? So, in the northeast, here you will find the cold desert, Ladakh cold desert. So, uh, have you seen this movie Three Idiots? So, there in the last scene, you will be in the, in the in front of a lake, right? So, that is a cold desert region. So, northeast Ladakh cold desert region is shown in the Three Idiots movie, right? So, Kashmir Valley. So, Kashmir Valley is see here Greater Himalayas is there. And, and here you have the Pirpanjal range. So between Pirpanjal and Greater Himalayas, you will find the Kashmir. Srinagar Valley will be found. The Kashmir Valley is between Greater Himalayas and Pirpanjal. Please remember. Then in the Kashmir Valley, Valley means you know right, Valley means what? Between two mountains, the depression is a valley. So in the Kashmir Valley, you will find the Kareva formation. What is Kareva? It is a glacial clay deposit. Kareva is a type of soil. So, this soil, Kareva is found only in the Kashmir Valley. Right? It is because of the glacier. The clay which comes from below the glacier. So, there you will, Kashmir is famous for saffron. Why saffron? It is called not, not a saffron. In Kashmir, it is called a zafran. So, why? Because it is grown in this particular soil called as Kareva soil, right? Okay, so uh, there are multiple glaciers also here. Glaciers, you know what is glacier from where the rivers originate. So the, the Siachen Glacier. So we have the world's highest battlefield, Indian Army, right? Where is it? Siachen Glacier, Operation Meghdoot, where? India occupied the, so India did not occupy, it was any of our land, it was occupied by the traitors, Pakistanis, so we reoccupied it, Operation Meghdoot, right, Siachen Glacier, Glacier is there, Baltoro Glacier is there, all these glaciers are there, so we will talk about the passes now, the passes are very very important from your exam perspective, so first pass is Jojila Pass, so where is this Jojila Pass, Jojila Pass is on Greater Himalayas, it is on Greater Himalayas. Then you have the Potula Pass. Po what is a pass in first place? See, these are very big mountains. 
So in order to cross the mountains, there these passes are very small places where we can cross the mountains, where the mountains are not very steep, right? So uh, next you have the what Potula Pass. Potula Pass is on Zaskar Range. Zaskar Range. See here is Zozila. Zozila on Greater Himalayas. Potula is not shown. Then you have what is next Banihal Pass. Banihal Pass is on Pir Panjal. Then last one you have. Kardungla Pass. Kardungla Pass is on Ladakh Range. Ladakh Range, Kardungla Pass is there. So they have also shown Baralachala Pass is there. Baralachala is also on Greater Himalayas, I believe. Then you have Shipkila. Shipkila is in Himachal Pradesh. Shipkila Pass is also there. Totally six passes, very, very important. Right? So also certain lakes are there here. Dal Lake and so there are two freshwater lakes here. What are they? Dal Lake and Ular Lake. Jhelum passes through Dal Lake or Ular Lake. It passes through Ular Lake. Right? W U L A R. Then you have two salt water lakes. Pengengso and So Moriri. Pengengso and So Moriri. I think Pengengso is above and so Pengengso the where India. Galvan Valley clash took place, right? It is on Pengengso. So it is here. Pengengso and So Mariri. Again, what are these lakes? Again, go back to Three Idiots movie. He will be standing in front of that lake, right? It is a salt water lake. Pengengso or So Mariri. It is also shown in this uh, Rajnikan's movie, Indiran, Robo. In that one of the songs is shot on, shot on these lakes. Pengengso and So Mariri, right? Then uh, there are what are the rivers that pass through this region? You have Indus River, Indus. Where is Indus going? Indus will be go. This is Indus. This river. This is Indus. So you have Indus River. You have Jhelum River. Jhelum see, Jhelum is here. Then you have the Chenab River. Chandrabaga. Chenab River is also there, right? So Jhelum. Uh, Jhelum passes through the Ular Lake. Here, uh, Jhelum, one special feature about the Jhelum is, see, I have told you about meanders. Meanders means this type of formation, river flowing in this, this type, this direction. So, Jhelum, here it is in youthful stage. But youthful stage, we are not finding the meanders. It is only found in the mature state stage. But why do we find the um, uh, meanders on Jhelum? in the youthful stage because there is a local base level local see earlier there was a big lake here so big lake gave a horizontal bed over which jhelum flew so when jhelum was coming from a valley when it found a horizontal bed it was coming from a valley so generally when coming from a valley rivers don't find form meanders but Jhelum forms it because earlier it was coming from a valley when it is coming from it found a lake flat lake in the flat lake it started forming meanders right it is because of the local base level provided by the earlier lake then uh, you find many pilgrimage sites here Vaishno Devi, Amarnath cave all these things are found here then you have dune formation dunes what are dunes? They are longitudinal, they are valleys. Dunes are valleys, you know what is a valley. But valleys which are very long are called dunes, right? So what are the dunes? You have Jammu Dune, Patan Kot Dune. Patan Kot Dune where the terrorist attack on the Indian Air Force Base happened, right? These are the dunes. Next, we will talk about the Himachal and, uh, Himachal and Uttarkhand Himalayas. Uttarkhand Himalayas. So here you have two rivers. It is between two rivers. The Himachal and Uttarkhand Himalayas uh, is the boundary is the western boundary is Ravi River, Rabi River, and eastern boundary is Kali River. Kali River goes somewhere here. So this is the boundary for the Uttarkhand and Himachal Himalayas, right? Okay. So what are the rivers that flow here? Ravi, Bees, and Satlaj. Ravi, Bees. Satlaj. These are the three rivers. You will find it here. And uh, 
सम रिवर्स या यमुना एंड गागरा आल्सो हैज इट्स ओरिजिन हियर यमुनोत्री बांदेर पुंच इज आल्सो वेयर डज यमुनोत्री ओरिजिनेट यमुना वेयर डज इट ओरिजिनेट यमुनोत्री राइट वेयर इज इट इट इज इन बांदेर पुंच राइट गंगा गौमुक गंगोत्री गागरा एंड गागरा गागरा इज अ ट्रिब्यूटरी ऑफ व्हिच रिवर Ganga River that also originates here. So here you find similarly three ranges, same three ranges. The first range is Greater Himalayan Range. The second range is the Lesser Himalayan Range, and third range is Shiva Lakes. Greater Himalayas, Lesser Himalayas, and Shiva Lakes. These three ranges you will find here also. So here Lesser Himalayas are called as Nagtiba. In Uttar Khand, Lesser Himalayas are called as Nagtiba. In uh oh, in himachal pradesh they are called as doladhar right they are called as doladhar so there are many hill stations also here dharmashala musori shimla all these are the hill stations where this british went and enjoyed right then you have shivalik formation shivalik are the smallest hills of the himalaya so here in the shivaliks uh, shivaliks are found here also then you find the dun formation longitudinal valleys what are the dunes in this region you have dera dun and you have kota dun you have arike dun all are the dunes so the biggest dun is the dera dun 35 to 40 kilometers i have been there last four days back very high traffic okay then you have the uh, in this region what are the people who are located you will find one tribe called as botias botias is the tribe in this region himachal and uttarakhand himalayas so they are nomadic people nomadic means they don't stay in one places they will take their animals and roam around so they will go to this grassland in the upper regions called bugyals so in summer what happens this rag, ice will melt and grasses will grow in summer they will go up the mountains right they will go up the mountains in winter ice will start forming they will come down the mountain so they are called botias right here you will find the valley of flowers in this region uttarakhand and himachal so it is in the uttarakhand a valley of flowers then also you have mali melt uh, this chardam what are the uh, chardam areas in this region you have yamunotri gangotri kedarnath and badrinath so chardam includes these four areas right well just check where is valley of flowers valley of flowers is in uttarakhand i am damn sure uttarakhand national park valley of flowers yes so then we will this is about the himachal and uttarakhand himalayas so himalaya uh, cross sectional view of himalayas so first you have see this is greater himalayas tall right then you have mid himalayas lesser himalayas then you have shivalik that is smallest of the himalayas then you have the plain maidan region clear so after greater himalayas you will find the ladakh range ladakh cold desert then you have kailash range above ladakh region kailash range it is here see kailash range above ladakh yeah so it is less taller than the ladakh range after that you will find the height in height you will find the tibetan plateau this is the tibetan plateau occupied by whom china then you will find the kunlun slope kunlun mountain where is kunlun here it is kunlun so this is the cross sectional view of the mountains for your better understanding then we will talk about the darjeeling and sikkim himalayas so this darjeeling himalayas it is between nepal and bhutan see here it is here is nepal here is bhutan between which you have the what what do you have darjeeling and sikkim himalayas here you have fast flowing rivers can you name one river in this region tista so west bengal and bangladesh are fighting over this river right tista river you will, which is the mountain range in this region you have kanchenjunga also called kanchenjunga right kanchenjunga national park okay so the here also there are one particular tribe in this region the particular tribe name is lepcha tribe lepcha tribes are uh, associated here here you will find moderate slope in the himalayas there is steep slope 
but in this region you will find moderate slope so that is why what they and also there was good soil that is why british went and put lot of tea plantation here in this region that is why you have this famous darjeeling tea in from this region right so in this region uh, by there is one surprising factor is in this region you won't find the shivaliks shivaliks is not present in this region but you will find duwar formation d u a r duwar formation is found in this region what is duwar duwar is just like dunes right there it is good for growing teas right tea plantation tree garden tea gardens are found here okay so uh, next we will talk about the arunachal uh, arunachal himalayas in arunachal when we talk about arunachal himalayas it goes from bhutan to namcha barwa um, uh, sorry dipu pass dipu pass so here somewhere it is dipu pass is there right and from bhutan from here to here is the arunachal himalayas so in which direction it is there direction south west to north east the direction is south west to north east so here also you have uh, there are multiple peaks here peaks means big mountains you have namcha parva peak is here and also kangtu peak it is not shown in the map kangtu peak is also here so here in this region you will find the fast flowing rivers what are the fast flowing rivers the brahmaputra kameng zubansiri dihang dibang lohit all these fast flowing rivers you will find in this region so they form deep gorges you know already what is gorges it is the parallel valleys parallel valleys or parallel areas where uh, parallel faults in the rocks through which the water river flows right so there are multiple ethnic tribes ethnic tribes in this region that is the tribal people so you have monpas so from west to east what are the tribal people you have present here very very important first from from this here you will find the monpas m o n p a s monpas then you will find the abors abor people then you will find the mishmi people all these are tribal people then you find the nishi people n y i s h e nishi people then you find the nagas 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 are found here also so these are the five types of tribe people you, you will find in this region you will find the slash and burn technique of cultivation slash and burn is jumming jumming type of cultivation is found here and also it is rugged topography rugged means it is not very easy to travel in this region the topography is not flat then you will find the eastern himalayas eastern hills and mountains so it is in the north and south direction here what are the mountains first you will find the patkai bum what bum patkai bum this is the first one then you will find the naga hills then uh, what do you find the manipur hills here you will find the manipur hills and the last uh, not the least mizo mizo hills so mizo hills is also called as lushai hills there is lushai people there lushai hills right there are certain rivers so where do you find this barak river it is between not barak obama there is one river called barak so two baraks are three baraks are important uh, for the world one is barak obama so there are two other baraks so one is barak mizail barak mizail given by whom israel to india barak mizail and one more is barak river in the northeast region between mizoram and manipur it is between mizoram and manipur so in manipur you find this lake called as loktak lake loktak lake is very very important because it is under this um, ramsar convention ramsar convention it is a convention for protecting the wetland uh, wetlands under which there is one record called montrex record under which loktak lake is there so this loktak lake it is lake, is a lake surrounded by mountains everywhere there is mountains in the middle one lake is there that is the loktak lake so here you will find this uh, one type of special vegetation pumdi vegetation so pumdi means they are like vegetation grown in the lake 
it's like grasses grown in the lake so there you have the pumdi Na one national park is also there on that land uh, on that pumdi veggie in the loktak lake one national park is also there grown over the pumdi vegetation right so uh, next you will in the mizoram mizoram what is mizoram called as mizoram is called as molasses basin this is very very important mizoram is called the molasses basin why because there is soft unconsolidated deposits deposits are there mountain deposits are there which are soft and not consolidated right so there is one river in this region mizoram and uh, manipur the river is chindwin river chindwin river which it, it flows into irrawadi where does irrawadi flow in myanmar right okay so this is all about the this is all about the mountains next we will talk about the northern plains northern plain region yes this is the northern plain region so in the northern plain you will uh, northern plains is made up of uh, indus brahmaputra and ganga river ganga rivers deposits right so this plain from east to west how much does it measure what is the measurement so from here from almost from here it is still here this region is the northern plain right so what is the length of the northern plain it is 3200 km east to west what is the width of the northern plain it is 150 to 300 km 150 to 300 km is the width what is the depth depth means height from the surface so 2 km 1 to 2 km of alluvial deposits are located in this area 1 to 2 km right so if you look at the northern plains from north to south it can be divided into three zones three zones the zones are babar terai and alluvial plain babar plain babar plain terai plain alluvial plain this can again be divided into bangar and kadar this is very very important bangar and kadar so this uh, babar plain so this babar plain is here so you know the shivalik mountains right this Uh, babar plain is parallel to the shivalik mountains it it is just located next to uh, shivalik mountains it is of the length 8 to 10 kilometers 8 to 10 kilometers so here when the streams uh, they come from the shivaliks they will deposit all the big materials in the babar plain all the big materials are dropped in the babar plain and they disappear in the see when the all the big materials are dropped the materials will become so big that the river will itself will become invisible it will flow below the material right in the babar plain then then you will find the terai plain after babar you will find the terai plain next plain in the terai plain it is of the length 10 to 20 kilometers right so so the, i told you the rivers which have disappeared in the babar plain they will come out of the terai plain they will reemerge from the terai plain so in the terai plain since rivers are coming out it is made up of marshy and swampy area what is marshy and swampy it is water and vegetation mix i'll show you what is how a marshy and swampy place looks like because if you don't see it it will be difficult to understand answer me
let it load internet is slow so so this terai region is made up of marshy and swampy area so this is a marshy and swampy area is full vegetation is also there also trees are also there water is also there can you see this is a marshy and swampy area right the terai region is looks like this and here there is a lot of good vegetation good vegetation you can find in this region right so uh, next comes the uh, region called bangar region what is bangar region it is uh, it is a next region it is formed out of old alluvium this is a marshy and swampy area the internet is slow okay so next comes the uh, banga bangar region bangar region it is made up of old alluvium that is alluvium which has bought by the rivers it has been deposited long back that is the that is old soil is called as old alluvial soil is called as bangar region and the new alluvial soil is called as kadar soil kadar soil right so um, next you will find the bangar and kadar so if there is a river if ganga is flowing like this next to ganga what do you find would you find the kadar or bangar next just next to the ganga river on the banks of the ganga will you find kadar or bangar you will find kadar because new alluvium is deposited immediately old alluvium soil which is bangar it is located a bit far away right so this is the concept okay so next uh, you will find the in this region you will find the uh, mature stage of fluvial erosion mature stage of fluvial fluvial means what water related erosion so erosion which takes place because of the water so you will find mature stage what are the things you will find in this plain you will find sand bars sand bars and the deposition of sand within the river then you will find meanders meanders i have told you meanders you will find then you will find oxbow lakes i have told you what is oxbow lake if there is a meander like this then some the lake is cut off that is a oxbow lake oxbow lake also you will find then you will find braided channels what are braided channels so if a river is coming like this it will get distributed like this this is a braided channel you will also find the braided channel in this region so why braided channel see what happens when the the bring the deposits they will de deposit the materials here so when the deposit materials is deposited what happens the river will get diverted river will get diverted because there some material will be deposited the river will get clash with it and it will be divided so that is the braided channel so it is a shifting river courses so when a river is coming it will deposit something here it will shift like this so the river channel will shift and when the river channel shifts what happens flooding will happen earlier there was no water here people would have constructed houses so some deposition happens and river comes like this flooding will happen so also you will find the large deltas in this region deltas deltas where the rivers will meet the ocean sundarban delta is the best example so i told you there, uh, there are three rivers here indus ganga and brahmaputra so which forms the division between these rivers it is haryana and delhi region haryana and delhi region forms the divide between the indus and ganga so indus goes like this ganga comes like this division is formed by the haryana and delhi region delhi ridge okay so brahmaputra brahmaputra flows from north east to south west direction see it is flowing from north east to south west direction here in this point it takes 90 degree turn
turn. Here see it is taking 90 degree turn. So this 90 degree turn is taken at one place called Dubri. Dubri it is, and it will flow into Bangladesh, right? So here also uh, the uh, large of la lot of alluvium, alluvium soil is deposited in this region and crops are uh, grown, crops are grown because of alluvium and there is large population, there is also floods also. So next we will talk about the peninsular plateau, peninsular plateau, right. So what is peninsular plateau? So this peninsular plateau I have already discussed, what is peninsular plateau, it is something like this, this entire part is a peninsular plateau, so its elevation is up to from 600 meters to 900 meters is the elevation and it is a irregular triangle, it forms a irregular triangle, so in the northwest you have the northwest boundary is made up of Delhi ridge, northwest boundary you have Aravalli range and Delhi ridge and to the east you have Rajmahal hills and to the west you have Gir, Gir forest, so Gir natural where tigers are, there, sorry lions are there. Then you have the towards the south you have the Cardamom hills in Kerala, right. So not only that there are in this uh, plateau, this in the peninsular plateau, within the plateau you will find some small small plateaus. They are called as packed land plateaus. Plateaus within the plateaus are called packed land plateaus. So, what are the types of plateaus? You have Karnataka plateau is there. You have Deccan plateau is there. You have Coimbatore plateau is there. Ranchi plateau is there. Azari Bag plateau is also there. So, this is the oldest and stable, most stable region. Plateau, this plateau is the oldest and the most stable and its elevation is from west to east means what so in this so if you take this plateau like this its elevation is like this west to east that is why all the rivers flows into bay of bengal this region it is high because of western guards here it is low clear so elevation is from west to east it slopes towards the okay so uh, i missed one thing okay so physiography, so ph physio geography, what is the physical geography or the physical characteristics of this place you will find, you will find uh, the block mountains, in this region you will find the block mountains of Vindhya and Satpura, you will find rift valley where the Narmada flows, then you will find bare rocky structure on the, so you will find spurs, spurs are what, I have uh, discussed it in the uh, concept of valley, glacier valleys, so spurs are triangle shaped valleys, triangle shaped valleys, you will find these spurs there, you will also find bare rocky structure and there will be rocky uh, plateaus, rocky plateaus will be there, then there will be dikes, dikes I have discussed in the volcano forms, dikes are vertical forms of vertical uh, way, uh, when the Volcano uh, or the lava get solidified in the vertical position, they form the dikes. Then you have Hamaki hills. Also you have what? Hamaki hills in this region. So, here this place is made up of this uh, uh, plateau. That is the peninsular plateau is made up of black soil. It is full of black soil where the cotton is grown. That is why it is called as black cotton soil right so here in this plateau there is upliftment and submergence as well so what is upliftment and submergence because of the tectonic tectonic activities that is plate tectonics some mountains are uplifted some parts are have gone down that is submergence that is faulting and fracturing has takes place has taken place that is why there is a fault that is there is a fault and there is a division so there is where the Bhima river flows the India is getting divided there that is the Indian plate is breaking at the Bhima fault right okay so next uh, we will uh, in the northwest region in the northwest region you will find ravines Chambal ravines uh, ravines you will find in the 
चंबल बिंद एंड मोरेना रीजन वॉट इज रेवेन्स देर ऑल्सो ए फॉर्म ऑफ टोपोग्राफी आई शो यू हव ए रेवेन लुक्स लाइक चंबल रेवेन्स सो इट इज एक्चुअली शोन इन दिस सिपाईरा मो मूवी दिस इज द चंबल रेवेन सीन दिस राइट इन द सिपाई राम मूवी सो आठ बरल इलीगे पैण यू थारी इन दट बी मूविंग इन दिस रीजन सो दिस इज द चंबल रेवेन सो इट इज फाउंड इन द नॉर्थ वेस्ट पार्ट ऑफ द प्लैट्यू दट इज पेनेसुलर प्लैट्यू नेक्स्ट यू हेव द डेकन प्लैट्यू so in the deccan plateau it is uh, in the deccan plateau you, you have what western ghats and in the deccan plateau you have west, it is bounded by western ghats and eastern ghats and uh, see this western ghats is having very good height and it is continuous it is continuous from here to here it is continuous western ghats whereas eastern ghats is discontinuous it has broken right so and it is of low height eastern ghats is of low height so in the north deccan plateau is the northern boundary of deccan plateau is formed by three mountains that is the satpura mountain vindhyas is here satpura mountains then also maikala range and mahadev hills maikala range and mahadev hills these three things that is the satpura mountains maikala and mahadev range forms the northern boundary of the deccan plateau right so this uh, uh, western ghats what is it called in the along the boundary so western ghats is called as sayadris in maharashtra what is it called in the karnataka and tamil nadu it is called as nilgiris in karnataka and tamil nadu western ghats is called as nilgiris and in kerala it is called as cardamom hills cardamom hills or the annai malai anna malai not the police officer the mountain anna malai hills right so the tallest part of the so this in the anna malai hills you have one place called annai mudi annai mudi it is the in the south india that is the tallest peak right annai mudi right so it is uh, of the height 2.7 km height right then you have eastern ghats eastern ghats you have it is eroded by rivers whatever the rivers that come from this side they will they have broken the eastern ghats they have broken the eastern ghats into multiple parts they are eroded by rivers so here you have multiple uh, mountains uh, you have javdi hills you have nallamalla hills you have mahendragiri hills right garjat hills all these hills are there in the where eastern ghats right where do the western ghats and eastern ghats meet both of them meet at the nilgiri hills both western ghats and eastern ghats meet at the nilgiri hills then you have the central highland this is the central highland part so what is central highland in central highland the boundary is western part is aravalli hills aravalli hills from the western part then the, to the south you have satpura hills not the vindhya to the south you have the satpura hills so uh, then it is uh, this central island it goes up to jaisalmer jaisalmer here right it goes up to jaisalmer in the jaisalmer region the plateau is at the bottom but above which sand has filled so this jaisalmer also comes uh, forms a part of the peninsular plateau so that is part of the central highland so in the jaisalmer region you will find what sand ridges and dunes crescent shaped dunes sand ridges and i have told when the sand has deposited in the form of a ridge sand ridges and crescent shaped dunes are found in the jaisalmer region so this crescent shaped dunes are called as what barchans i have discussed in the word physical geography so then in the satpura region in the uh, satpura region of the central highlands you find scarped plateau scarp plateau scarp plateau is a type of broken plateau plateau is a what first of all what you should understand plateau plateau is a land which is above the mean sea level it is formed of igneous rock 
right so that plateau if it is broken at places it is a scarp plateau so this uh, this scarp plateau you will find in the satpura region right satpura region is formed out of scarp plateau it forms the southern boundary of the central highland right so what are the rocks that are found here what what is the type of rock that is found in the central highland it is metamorphic rock metamorphic rock that is marble slate and gneiss central highland you will find the metamorphic rocks of metamorphosis i have told because of pressure temperature volume variation pvt changes the rocks igneous rock or sedimentary rocks get converted into metamorphic rocks so granite is a igneous rock mar marble is a metamorphic rock so it is formed out of metamorphic rocks the height of the central island is 700 700 to 1 kilometer height is 700 to 1 kilometer it slopes towards the north see this central island it is sloping towards the north so satpura let's say satpura hill is here and this is the central island this is north this is south this is north and right this central island is sloping towards the north towards the north there is elevated down there is proper down elevation or degrade or there is a gradient that is why the rivers whatever the rivers that originate in the central island they fall towards the they go and fall into the ganga and yamuna because there is a elevation so uh, that is why these tributaries banas and chambal who which rivers tributary are they Yamuna river tributary Banas and Chambal fall into the uh, Yamuna because of the because of the slope in the region. So the eastern eastern boundary of this uh, central island is the Rajmal Hills. Rajmal Hills. So the last concept of the day is northeastern plateau. Northeastern plateau. This plateau we have to discuss. So it is the extension of peninsular plateau. I told you peninsular block is broken here, broken here by the Malda flood and fault, and there is a northeastern plateau here. So, uh, so Indian plate, Indian plate, this plate moved towards the northeast. When it moved towards the northeast, there was a fault here because of which that fault is called as Malda fault. This fault is later, it's a depression filled by the debris, debris of the rivers, right? It is detached from India. So there is no connection of this northeast fault with the India. It is now broken. So it consists of three hills. What are the three hills? Garo, Jaintia and Kashi hills. So here there are a multiple minerals. So in the central islands also, there is one area called Chota Nagpur Plateau. Chota Nagpur Plateau has lot of minerals. Likewise, this area also has lot of minerals. So this area, you will find southwest monsoons. The monsoon which comes to the Kerala, it will also go to the northeastern plateau region. So that is why there is high rainfall, which is the place of highest rainfall in the world, Mosinram. Mosinram, Chirapunji. So you will find it here in this region, Meghalaya, right? So that's it for the day. So we will meet again. Please take care of your health. If you have any doubts, please put it in the comment section or do contact us on our Telegram channel, VHS Education Forum. And also you can give feedback about the quality and improvement, whatever suggestions you have. Please make good use of the classes, both freshers and veterans. We are uh, putting in a lot of hard work so that the classes run for free of cost and take care of your health. Jai Hind. Namaste.